MMAfighting.com for all the latest MMA news and gossip and the most exclusive interviews anywhere with your favorite fighters. That's MMAfightCorner.com, your all-access pass to everything MMA. Hi, this is Billy Muir from the MMA Fight Corner Radio Show here on Fox Sports Radio. And I want to tell you about a great gym right here in Vegas that is helping me get into way better shape while teaching me to protect myself like an MMA fighter, even though I have no plans of ever stepping inside the cage. Extreme Couture helps me and plenty of other men, women, and children get into better shape while having a great time in a family atmosphere with coaches leading classes who really care about me. Where else can you go and see world-class athletes like Randy Couture and a host of other UFC fighters training? Nowhere. So whether you're someone who just wants to compete or get in shape, Shape, learn boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, grappling, jiu-jitsu. Oh, and I almost forgot, they have great kid classes as well. Extreme Couture is the place for you. No matter what skill level you're at, trust me, I know. It helped me get my butt right back into shape. Call and visit this state-of-the-art facility today. Call 702-616-1022. That number again is 702-616-1022. You'll be glad you did. I know I was. Stop! Stop paying too much interest on your title loan. Go to Fast Cash Title Loans, where they're offering a 9.95% rate. While everyone else is paying up to 24% on their title loans, you can get one from Fast Cash Title Loans for only 9.95%. If you have a title loan somewhere else, Fast Cash will go with you to pay it off and get you a new loan at a lower rate. Come into Fast Cash Title Loans today and pay only 9.95%. Call 685 4100. That's 685 4100. Quinn Rempe's deck. Drops him. This is Frankie the Answer, Edgar. Hey, this is Rashad Evans, and you listen to MMA Fight Corner. And here we go. This is a championship fight. This is MMA Fight Corner, live on Fox Sports Radio from Las Vegas, with your hosts, Billy Mira, Phil Devine, and Joey Varner. Hey, this is Mike Goldberg, voice of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and you are listening to the MMA Fight Corner. Here we go. Here we go. go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. You are here with myself, Billy Mira, Phil Devine, and Joey Vonner on this Tuesday evening after a great, great weekend of fights. We definitely have a lot, lot to talk about. Tuesday night lineup includes in-studio guests, former co-founder of Affliction MMA, VP of Affliction Entertainment, Tom Atencio, who is also the face of Affliction, if you remember, with the glasses on. We got to, we got to, yeah, we got to clarify that. We also have a photo with Gray Maiden later in the show, so I'm stoked to get started tonight. And uh, let's start with some quick thoughts about the historic UFC 157 fight card that happened this past weekend. And of course, everybody can join in as well. Tom, feel free to give your thoughts as well. Yeah, all, all I have to say is that this weekend, you know, you you said the it perfectly. It was historic, but it's it was scary. Uh, when you look at Ronda Rousey and just her ability to, no ma- first off, hats off to Liz Carmouche. She did a good job. Had Ronda in a position we hadn't seen her in before. You know, you saw Ronda coming back from adversity. But the fact that she still got the arm bar in the first round, it's just scary. It doesn't matter what you do. It's coming. Yeah. Dude, uh, I got to tell you what, she's definitely shut the mouths of all the pundits who are booing and, and, and throwing fits and all the all the media people, all the fans that were so pissed off that Machida Hendo wasn't the main event. She shut them up. And, and Liz Carmouche, she was the perfect talent. That fight couldn't have gone any better if they scripted it, you know. It wasn't like she just came out there and steamrolled her opponent. It wasn't like, you know, the, the, the UFC on Fox 1 where it's over in 10 seconds with one, you know, one thing. One, she slams her down and arm bars her right away. We saw her get tested. We saw her get challenged. We saw her get pushed to the limits. And she persevered and she prevailed. I mean, and like you said, Phil, you see it coming. You know it's coming. But you can't stop it. How scary is it? I mean, think about this. You have professional fans fighters okay because we're at that level now we're in the UFC we don't have to call them women or men we have professional fighters who are at that they're the top of the level in their game and you train for six seven eight nine however long your training camp is and you know what your opponent's bringing and there's still nothing you can do about it yeah yeah you know what though at the same time it's like this women's MMA is awesome I'm a diehard fan they fight but 
it is 10 years behind men's MMA. It's still growing. It's not at the same point as where the men's division. I mean, I mean that with no disrespect. But what I'm saying, though, is that she is like the Hoist Gracie women's MMA. She's so much further ahead in one particular dominant art than anyone else out there. And so it's like uh, Liz Carmouche. How long has she been doing jiu-jitsu for? I, I five, don't know. Five but, years? But no, the, I'm just saying, like, five years of training, you know, and, and then two months of armbar training is not enough to deal with, you know, 20 years uh, of, of Olympic caliber judo training and armbar. Mom waking you up with an armbar, you know. And they say it's like 10,000 hours of practice to be a master at a skill. And she has over this. She probably has 10,000 armbars under her belt. I, I completely understand that, okay. But it's not like back with Hoist Gracie where, you know, they didn't know what was coming. Yeah, but- Here you know what's coming. But at the end of the day, when you have somebody that's perfected a certain, if somebody does one technique a thousand times versus somebody that does a, a bunch thousand of te- techniques one time, exactly, exactly. That's the that, Bruce Lee said. Bruce Lee. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Fear, fear not the man that knows a thousand kicks. Fear the man that knows one kicks, but has done it a thousand times. Exactly, and that's really what it comes down to. She's perfected it, and and you could be great at defending, but if somebody has perfect technique. And perfect skill, they've done it so many times, it's virtually impossible to, to, to combat against. Is there anyone out there that you think could give her a challenge? Oh, yeah. Oh, the, everyone in that women's division. Eh? I, I think I think Katz and No, I mean, I think Ronda, she's got the chops, and she's definitely, she's a gained opponent. But uh, uh, Kat Zingano, she wrestled four years of her life. She's, a, I believe, a brown belt or a black belt almost in jiu-jitsu. She's a tested jiu-jitsu practitioner for wrestling guys. She's a grinder. She's tough. She's nasty. She's big, strong, and vicious. She's definitely got a chance to do it. Um, Sarah McMahon, that's Olympic the fight silver. I that's, see. The, that's, that's my dark horse of the division. She's so so nice. She's so sweet. She's a silver. We got a we got a bronze medalist in judo, and she's a silver medalist in wrestling. And she's a stud. She she likes the stand up game too. She actually chooses to not so much sometimes take it to the ground, but stand and bang. Like her last fight, she could have taken it on the ground, and ended it quick, and she just wanted to stand and bang. So I'm excited for her. I think that's definitely an exciting match matchup. Um, Alexis Davis. I mean, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of talent in this in the in the women's division. They went out and found you know not just ten solid women fighters, but ten potential threats to Ronda Rousey. There's exciting matchups, and I can see a lot of trilogies evolving in women's mixed martial arts in the UFC over the next couple of years. I'm definitely interested yeah, to see what Phil, happens. Phil ask, <clears throat> who can come in and challenge Ronda Rousey, and you mentioned Hoist Gracie. I think we should just put a wig on him and let him <laughs> let him come in and challenge her. Because I think, I think, I think that's the only answer at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 you gotta you gotta turn uh, the mic on when you drop something yeah, like that. You Armando. say something like that, oh. Armando. You're Armando, you Armando, drop uh, comedy gold uh, like that, yeah, and yeah. you can't even hear it. Okay. Armando says, "Is yeah, isn't you know, his name Cyborg?" <laughs> but see, Armando like, gave a good tag to my joke. I like that. I, that I uh, you know I hear people talking on Twitter and on the internet saying how you know th- Ron is scared of her or you know. Th- here's the issue that I have: make the fight at a catch weight. If you really want to make this fight happen, you can. Make it at a catch weight. And I know, Rhonda, what was it she said after she beat Sarah Kaufman, saying, uh, you want to beat the champ, Cyborg, you come down to my weight. Well, remember, Rhonda Who was, was 145. Yeah. Rhonda used to fight at 145, and it was it's only this is her third fight. Yes, it's at, only at, since the Misha, the Misha Tate fight that she dropped. Her amateur career and in the, the five, six fights in her pro career, she were fought at 145, and so when you think about it, Phil, going off what you said, you you want to you want to beat the champ, you got to come down. Well, Cyborg was actually the champ first. Yeah, she was the champ and, at 145, and, 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 and the people that and Ronda's the one who changed weight classes. Yeah, she, w- Ronda dropped down a weight, and it's funny. Cyborg now is fighting. Uh, she's fighting for Invicta. She's fighting the girl that Ronda had her very first professional MMA fight against. Ronda tapped her out in 25 seconds. Let's talk about the white elephant in the room, though. Okay. <laughs> Cyborg is a white elephant. Well, <laughs> come on. At the, at the end of the day, Cyborg's uh, you know kind of um, manly, manly because of the, because of um, of enhancements, I guess. So you know whether 
is that going to make a huge difference if she's not doing it anymore? Well, hold if, on. If, if, time if, out. Let's, that's okay. speculation. Well, okay, she yeah. Got and once. that's what I was trying to say. So that's like, you know, she, she did get in trouble once. We have right. looked at her physique and speculated. But really, unless she gets popped, you know, on, on, on a J- Josh Barnett status, no offense to your boy there, Tom. Oh, yeah. But, you know, I think he's three <laughs> or four deep right now. Is you know? that all? I think, yeah, yeah. He's that yeah, all? Th- yeah. <laughs> but he still denies it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, okay, so let's say let's say that's the case. It ain't just the river in Egypt. Okay, yeah. Denial. So let's say that's the case. How much of an effect do you think that's going to happen if, if whatever, it's true, if it's not, if it's, let, let's say it's true, how much of an effect is that going to have when she's hitting? Look at, look at, um, uh, Overeem. Overeem. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't look the same in this last fight. Now, again, speculation, whatever you want to call it, he didn't look the same. He didn't look like he had as much power. He Good. didn't look like Okay, I'll give you that. But let's go down the list of people who are on TRT right now who are who are using testosterone, which is the steroid that most likely cyborg or someone is some testosterone derivative. How many of these people have lost their last fight? We've, if there's one thing we've seen, it's that it doesn't help in the cage. It doesn't. I mean, Dan didn't help Dan Henderson to hit Machida. Didn't help uh, Chael Sutton to beat to beat uh, Anderson Silva any any of the two times. I mean, it didn't help Bonner. It, it didn't. It doesn't. It hasn't helped really anybody. If you look yeah. at statistic wise, they're s- losing. Most most of them have lost. Have, most. Have, have you guys heard about what Tito Ortiz is kind of trying to put forward there? He's trying to say that if um, Cyborg comes over to Invicta, she should have a couple of fights and then. They should a have, a fight, have a fight at a catch weight of 140 pounds and have it not for a title. So what's the harm? And instead, it would be the biggest pay per view, you know, women's pay per view in the history. Uh, it, it would kill the numbers um, that they did this weekend. And even though they were, you know, fairly fairly good numbers, it still would. And he kill talked them. about her going over there and, and having a few fights, of course, naturally before this happened. Wasn't he even he willing mapped to? It out. He, he said was willing he to fight Dolce with, with her. Well, no, that was Dolce was with from Dana. Dana volunteered Dana. Dolce's services to Would get her down to thirty-five. It. Yep. But Tito's strategy was to go over there right now, fight for the belt against the number two forty-fiver in the world. Um, I'm drawing a blank on her name, Heidi. What's her name? Ah, oh, Heidi just let me down. Not listening. <laughs> Dang, man. You're supposed to be you're supposed to be Johnny on the spot dropping knowledge. What's uh, the number two uh, forty-fiver in the world? Women's that Cyborg's fighting. I- Igiana. Um, no, Adriana Gomez, yeah. So, so um, you know he, the the plan that Tito laid out is for Cyborg to come and smash her, and then smash two more girls, build up the hype, and then champ versus champ ditch the belts and do a catchweight. But the thing is this though, how much have you built up that champ Cyborg in another division? You know, in in, in, in to the UFC fans, they're gonna. I mean, the UFC will sell the fight, but it's not like she's been fighting in the UFC. So your average people who are buying this, they're not gonna know her as much as if she was already in the UFC. So you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Uh, I do like that. You know, we but, finally got to see the women headlining uh, the UFC pay per view because, you know, um, from what I'm hearing from uh, Gina Carano's manager is that Gina's getting a little bit of an itch. So maybe. Maybe this draws her out of you know you know the movie, which I don't think tough. it's going to draw her out but of the li- movie. I'd like to see her come back. I, I definitely yo she can't go out like that. Really, she got punked. I mean, I love Gina. That's my girl. I train with her. I you know I spar with her. I mean, we hung out. That's my friend. But in all honesty, she got punked. Like she, I think. And the thing is this though, put my friendship, put my relationship with her on the side. Stylistically, she should beat Cyborg all day. She just didn't fight the right fight. She just came out there and kind of... And now, granted, there was a lot of turmoil. Tom, you're aware of the turmoil that was going on backstage. There was, like, people arguing about sponsorships, fighting with her coaches when she's getting ready to walk out. I mean, there was a lot of stuff, you know, going down behind the scenes that weren't conducive to producing a quality championship-level performance. But, see, that's why I brought it up. because, Because when you actually saw that fight, it looked like... And no offense to Gina at all, but it looked like she crumbled when she got hit by Cyborg. And that's what I've seen from all the women that have fought Cyborg. It looks like they've never been hit as hard as Cyborg hits. So whether it's anything out, not outside of nat, not natural ability, I'm just saying, if it's Cyborg, it's been shown that when women get hit by her, it changes the game. I got to disagree with you, though, because it, in watching what Cyborg's done, it's not a devastating punching power. 
it's one of these overwhelming things where that's she, what I think it is. She just overwhelms him. There's you don't see these punches like she just old no, school Phil Baroni. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean like yeah. The, there's one <laughs> that'll detour. like she just stiffed. No, I mean not, she doesn't have power like that. She doesn't well, have power I'm, like. But she stiffed that one. She starts the Japanese girl that that she pissed hot for. She starts her. But aside from that, it's just an overwhelming barrage. Like it's not like they're not hurt. Their eyes aren't rolling back. Their legs aren't weak. It's just like she's so huge. She's showing up at fight day at like 160, 165. Five. These girls are 152. You know what I'm saying? She's 20 pounds bigger, arguably laboratorially enhanced. Yeah, it's, all, it's, all the, it's all in the Adam's apple. <laughs> yeah, 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 right? You know what I'm saying? If you had to predict right now, if <laughs> if a fight went, went down right now with Ronda Rousey and Cyborg, how do you think that fight would go down? Okay, here's the difficulty in this for me is that Cyborg has one style, and that's come forward. She comes forward, punching, 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 grabs, clinch, knee, knee, elbow, punch. She's going forward, forward, forward. And the issue with that is when you go forward, 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 it's really easy for your opponent to grab you and to judo toss you on your head, which is Ronda's game. So that's like, when I look at it like that, I'm like, well, uh, Ronda got this fight because Cyborg's going to play into it. But then the other thing is, Tom, what you did touched on is, is, is she does hit hard and she does overwhelm. And what we've seen of Ronda when she gets hit is very little. We haven't seen a lot. But she has kind of showed a little Brock Lesnar syndrome where she turtles up. She's not very comfortable. She doesn't like it. She looks away. She's and getting it's, swarmed by bees. Yes, exactly. That's that's Brock Lesnar syndrome right there. Yeah. And, and, uh, <laughs> and if she does that to Cyborg... Cyborg's putting her to sleep. Because remember, when Misha Tate did that, when Misha, T- when Misha Tate caught her and rocked her and unloaded these punches, Misha grabbed Ronda. Misha stopped punching. It wasn't Ronda that grabbed Misha. It was Misha that went for the Tate. Now, Misha brain farted. She's the one who made the mistake. So if Ronda does that to Cyborg, she's going to get stopped. If Cyborg tries to go from punching and grab a tie clinch, put her hands anywhere where the punches stop, and give me uh, give give Ronda some breathing room where she can she gets a hold of her. She gets a hold of her. You know, if if if, if, if the tie game, that's Ronda's game. That clinch, that tie clinch, that's Ronda's world. That's hips. Our hips are close enough. You're going for a ride. Buckle up. You know, keep all hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times. You're going for a <laughs> ride. Mayday. Put your seatbelt on. Yeah. And Cyborg's ground is not good. I mean, it, that was that was shown. So if if Ronda could get her on the ground it would be a whole different ball game but the thing is that's hard to that's hard to teach the fear of getting hit that's not something that goes away very easily technique and and figuring everything else is is, is, you can just work on work on work on but getting hit and that fear of getting hit you can work on it but at the end of the day when you get hit there's something in people that just it takes a while to get rid of. You can develop it. There's yeah. way, but the problem is, you know, here's the problem with this because you can't develop it. I've seen it. You see me, man. I'm I'm yeah. calm as a cool when I'm getting punched. You know, I'm, but I wasn't always light. Well, I used to just go nuts and start swinging like a maniac. But there's ways to develop it. The problem is this though, is are are you is is she is Brock are the people willing to put themselves through what they need to put themselves through because really what she has to do is get in there and get beat on. But that's what I'm saying. That's and, what and I mean. So with coaches protecting her with like, you know, she gets uncomfortable, is she willing to do what she needs to do to get comfortable getting hit? And there's one more flip to this as well though. And this is why I think the weight is such a huge thing because that Greco game where she, or that, that that judo game where she can toss her, you know, I think Ronda feel I mean uh, uh, Cyborg feels a lot more comfortable about being able to manhandle out of that. Did you see what what um what um I'm, Liz, Liz was doing where she was trapping the hips, pushing off and just pushing off. That's the great defense to do against someone like that. You know, strike, strike, strike. They try to grab, push off, hands on the hips, duck the head un- under the arm. You know, and that's how she got Ronda's back. And that's and she and, and she took it where she where was where she almost won, but also why she ended up losing. Exactly. But um, but I think Ronda feels. I mean, uh, 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 Cyborg feels that at 165 pounds. Fight night, meaning at 145 weight of weigh-ins, that she'll be able to manhandle Ronda and get out of that. But at 135, meaning she'll only be 150 at fight night, that she might not have that same advantage. But do you really think that fight's going to happen? No. no, never. No, and I think, I think, yeah, I, I think I, that's honestly, the in this one year that Tito mapped out his master plan, you guys right here. Joe, Joe Stradamus is putting it out there. <laughs> I'm putting it out there right now. I, I, <laughs> what's that, Armando? Hey, uh, uh, Armando, you kind of look like Alf when you made that face, actually, from Milmac. <laughs> uh, I say they both lose in that year. 
Really? Yeah, so I think they'll both lose. So Joe think- Stradamus, did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> did you, I, I still can't get over that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's a, but how much does that play into into Ronda's training camp, getting ready for that? How much can she actually train for that? That barrage of punches coming into a. She's got to get hit. You got to get hit. That's it. You got to get in there. You have to get comfortable getting hit. Uh, remember the writer Matt Pauley? He wrote a book about MMA. Um, I coached him for it. It, it was uh, um, from uh, from writer to fighter. Uh, yeah, no, it was. Um, I, I I didn't read tapped that. out. I didn't read that one. Okay, so anyways, uh, yeah, one of the things we used to do with him was i put him in the corner, and I'd have him just keep his hands up, and someone would start punching at him at 30%, 40%, you know, and they'd pick it up slowly, and they'd pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, and he's, you know, it's getting more intense. The punches are getting harder. The thing is this, though. Think about this, Phil. When you punch someone, your fist has two feet to travel to hit their face. Their hand has an inch and a half to two inches to move to block it. But yet, so mathematically speaking, the law of inertia, the rate at which objects travel, you shouldn't be able to hit someone. But emotions come into play. Fear, worry, anxiety, anger, wanting to hit back. And that clouds your ability to think, to act, to be proactive, as Phil likes to say, instead of reactive. I, I, but when you put them in the fire, when you when you throw them in the fire and you get them, you just have someone punch at them, all they can do is, is defend, keep their eyes on the chest, move, you know, it builds that up. It builds that tolerance. It builds that comfort level. And, and they get comfortable. They don't have to get, they don't have to like getting hit, but they get comfortable getting hit. Beautiful. <laughs> so it's, so, it's what's got to happen. Well, yeah. Ty, well, we have in studio now Tom Atencio is, is joining us as well, who else has Grips Athletic, which he will tell us about after the break, after we have Gray on. I think Gray's supposed to join us at 630 as well. But right now, let me tell you about an amazing experience I had right here in Las Vegas. I recently had my LASIK procedure done to correct my eyes to better than 2020. I do not need glasses anymore, and I'm telling you, it's like a miracle. Dr. Rothman and his staff were incredible through the whole process and extremely professional through the LASIK process. I urge anyone who has thought about getting LASIK to speak with my doctor, Dr. Rothman. He offers a free consultation and 50% off LASIK. When you mention my name, Billy Mirren, zero. Percent financing available. Call 702 636 2010. That's 702 636 2010. You're going to be glad you did. I know I was. We come back. We have everybody in the studio and Gray made it on the line. You are listening to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. The MMA Fight Corner. What's up, fight fans? Wondering where to go when the MMA Fight Corner is not airing on Fox Sports Radio or Fox 5 TV? Go to MMAFightCorner.com for all the latest MMA news and gossip and the most exclusive interviews anywhere with your favorite fighters. That's MMAFightCorner.com, your all-access pass to everything MMA. Say hello to the new D Las Vegas Casino Hotel, where it's one big party, both on and off the casino floor. The Fremont Street experience just got a whole lot better. Full of friends, fun, and a winning atmosphere. This is where it's at. This is the D Las Vegas. Long on fun, short on ordinary. See what's new at the D. Great dining at Joe Bacari's Andiamo Italian Steakhouse. New entertainment in a renovated showroom. Three amazing bars and much more. Everyone's hanging at the D. Hi, this is Billy Muir from the MMA Fight Corner Radio Show here on Fox Sports Radio. And I want to tell you about a great gym right here in Vegas that is helping me get into way better shape while teaching me to protect myself like an MMA fighter, even though I have no plans of ever stepping inside the cage. Extreme Couture helps me and plenty of other men, women, and children get into better shape while having a great time in a family atmosphere with coaches leading classes who really care about me. Where else can you go and see world-class athletes like Randy Couture and a host of other UFC fighters training? Nowhere. So whether you're someone who just wants to compete or get in shape, learn boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, grappling, jiu-jitsu. Oh, and I almost forgot, they have great kid classes as well. Extreme Couture is the place for you. No matter what skill level you're at, trust me, I know. It helped me get my butt right back into shape. Call and visit this state-of-the-art facility today. Call 702-616-1022. That number again is 702-616-1022. You'll be glad you did. I know I was. Honey, put this on top of the minivan. We're only going for two weeks. You want me to back the kitchen sink, too? Well, is there room? Hey, you guys, you going on vacation? Who's that? I don't know. Because we're planning on robbing your house tonight. All right, I'm calling an alarm service. Wouldn't it be great if you could be warned of life's risks? If you have diabetes, you can. 
There's a simple blood test called A1C that can help measure your risk of complications from diabetes. Why is it important? Because more than 600 people every day die from diabetes and its complications. If your A1C is above 7, your doctor can show you how to lower it. If you have diabetes, know your risk. Know your A1C. Ask your doctor, or for more information, go to www.diabetesa1c.org or call 1-877-TEST-A1C. Brought to you by the American Diabetes Association, Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation International, and the Ad Council. Each year, there's one weekend that NASCAR fans in Las Vegas circle on their calendars. It's March 8th through 10th when NASCAR returns to the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Tony Stewart and Jimmy Johnson are already texting about it. Jimmy, winning Vegas was great. I think I'll do it again. Dude, I've won four of them. How are you going to beat me? It wasn't too hard last year. March 8th through 10th, NASCAR returns to Las Vegas. Call 644-4444 or visit LVMS.com today for your weekend package. Stop! Stop paying too much interest on your title loan. Go to Fast Cash Title Loans, where they're offering a 9.95% rate. While everyone else is paying up to 24% on their title loans, you can get one from Fast Cash Title Loans for only 9.95%. If you have a title loan somewhere else, Fast Cash will go with you to pay it off and get you a new loan at a lower rate. Come into Fast Cash Title Loans today and pay only 9.95%. Call 685-4100. That's 685-4100. Hey there, everybody. This is Boss Rootsum. ding a ding a ding Boom, boom, boom. Yes, you are listening to the MMA Fight Corner. Keep listening. Otherwise, I come through that radio or through that little computer thing, and I'm going to rip you up and live a shot you. Bada bing, bada boom. God, speed and party on. Woo! Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. You are here with myself, Billy Mira, Phil Devine, Joey Varner, and a packed house here. Armando's here, and that's the most important part of the whole show right there. Armando! Said Armando. Do you have, here. Do you have TV for my cornholio? <laughs> do you have TV for my mongol, Armando? Uh, is, uh, is our guest on the line? Ah, what's happening? Joining us on the line right now is UFC lightweight Gray Manor, who's expected to face TJ Grant at UFC 160 on May 25th, 2013. Gray, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Doing well, man. Doing well. Um, how you feeling? Feeling great. Like a million bucks. <laughs> how you, you feeling? I'm doing all right over here. I got your boy sitting next to me, Joey Varner. Yep. So I heard. What <laughs> except in Santa Cruz with you, SA? Except in Santa Cruz with me. Uh, which that's the only place he needs to be, man. I'm headed that way, man. I'm I'm gonna actually when the show's over, I'm gonna drink a drink a Gatorade, eat a power bar, and I'm gonna get, get on my ten speed and pedal your way. Better do better <laughs> do the coffee too. Uh, <laughs> well so so how's life out in Cali now? Ride. How's life now out in California for you, Gray? Perfect. Couldn't ask for anything more. You know, this is the life. And and can my life that is. Your and and the transition over with AKA and all those guys. How's that been? Oh, I mean that's a great gym. You know they have the the plan down pat and uh, you know it's a core group of guys. They're tight and uh, they've been doing it for a long time. So they know how to do. They know how to do it. Yeah, you spend MMA part for sure. Yeah, definitely. And you, when you look at the just the guys that have come out of there and the caliber, it's uh, top notch. And you know, every single guy we've had on from there is just you know, they, they're top top class. So um, it, it's good yeah. to see you over there. You also spend some time in Brazil. How's that been? Yeah, uh, it's been good. I've been down there like three different times. Um, it's a great place to go. Um, I go down to help Aldo and. And then a couple of the other, and then a couple of other guys, and uh, just it's kind of like the AKA, like down there, you know, they're uh, they're a tight group of guys, and and they know MMA, and they do that. It's like the South American AKA. Yeah, pretty much it. And they're all about about the MMA. It's not like well, we do gi, that's all we do is gi, and then a little bit of boxing here, and then 
this and that. No, it's just all MMA. And, uh, you know, I guess I guess they're doing pretty good. Looks that way. They've been on a I've tear. Heard, I've heard. Yeah, I've heard, yeah. So I've heard. <laughs> Marlon Sando, Sandro, Dante's, Eduardo Dante's. Jose how, Aldo. How tough is that kid, huh? He's slick, dude. I love his jab, oh, man. Man, he is so. He, that kid is good, dude. You get to spar with him down good. there? Oh yeah, all those guys. Now, yeah. Gray, you talked about before. You said that you were in Pettis, were on a on a collision course, and now he's dropping down to 145 to face Jose Aldo. What are your thoughts on that fight? How do you see it going down? Um, I mean. You know, we haven't watched Pettis in an actual scrap in probably probably the last time was uh, Jeremy Jeremy um, Stevens. What's his last? Name? Yeah, Stevens. And um, you know, what I take off of that is he didn't like to get hit. You know, um, he's a tough kid. He's slick, but. Um, you know, Aldo is going to hit him. And, you know, if he can take it, it'll be a great bout. But if not, you know, I think Aldo, he, I mean, he's a tough kid, you know, and he'll keep going. And uh, it's just hard to tell how good he is off the Joe Lazone and the and the Donald uh, uh, Cerrone. Cerrone. Yeah, that, that, they're just too quick. You know, I don't judge a guy off off of the, that type of stuff of course it's it's uh, uh flashy good of course but like i judge it off of three rounds he gets hit comes back keeps going you know that's that's where you know like all right this kid's gonna be a tough fight you want to see what he does, and you judge it by how he handles adversity, what he does when he's been yeah, rocked. adversity when is, is the key to our sport. You know, if she, I mean, that's, uh, that, that is the, the whole sport, you know, throughout the camp, throughout the bout. You know, you got to answer that call. No doubt. And <laughs> no, man. <laughs> that's that was deep. <laughs> yeah, no, it was. Just, wow, we were in a we were in like a seance state yeah, here. Yeah, we kind of right. all paused, paused for deep reflection. <laughs> can, can we just change yeah. your name from bully to sensei now? Yeah, yeah. sensei Maynard. Sensei Maynard, yeah. please. No, do I mean, so. I mean, the kid is flashy. He's good, but you know, it's hard to judge for me off the last two. You know, so. Um, uh, We'll see. Jose Aldo is a tough kid, you know, and he's going to hit him. And, 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 you know, Aldo hits hard. So it's going to be a fun fight to watch, though. Hey, Gray, this is Tom. Serious fight. Yeah. How you doing, Hi. man? Tom. It's Tom Intensio. Really? Yeah, what he's what in up, studio. Gray? Tom Intensio is here. here. In the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you been, man? How you been? <laughs> Hey, question you for you. I mean, uh, I was I was incog. Can't uh, text me no more. I was incognito for a little bit. Okay. <laughs> hey, hey, Greg, Greg. Well, hey, Greg, Greg. You know where he was? He was making babies. I ran into him in L.A. and he got a <laughs> he got a three year old running around. I was like, oh my goodness. Really? I was practicing for years. Really? Did you know about it? It finally happened. <laughs> did he know? He he didn't know about it until that day I saw him. Like he just got this three year old dropped <laughs> on his lap. It's Joey. yours. Joey dropped him off to me. <laughs> yeah. The girl's been telling me it was mine for years. I got the blood work done. It's yours, Tom. No, I've had I've had him since day one. I knew about it. So, anyway, awesome, it's not man. about Congrats. me. This is about you, Gray. Huh? Hey, so what do you what do you think about? Um, okay, I, I personally I'm gonna go out on a limb on this, and it's not, uh, you know, I don't think Pettis is gonna beat Jose Aldo. I, I my yeah. question to you is, who do you think is there anybody that can beat Aldo Aldo in his weight division right now? Because I, I just don't see anybody right now. Well, real quick before you answer that one, Ma uh, Grant, Thomas I hate to cut you tough off. That last fight, Thomas looked tough. That last fight, he beat a he beat a really good kid, dude. Um, bad. Uh, what's that kid's name? Hot. Er Coke. Eric Coke, yeah. Er Eric Coke. Ricardo Lamas. Lamas, Lamas did his thing, man. I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I think he's tough. When, you know, and I think that'll be a good, that'll be a good bout. You know, he he knows how to take a guy down. He knows how to throw the elbows, ground and pound. I mean, 
Lamas is tough. And he's the bully, so, I mean, and he's got bull terriers, so, you know. Did he bite your style? No, he didn't. He actually has his own style, man. He's got bully. He's had bullies for a long time, so, uh, you know. Well, we might not actually see that fight, though, because uh, Jose Aldo was teasing about a move up to lightweight, and now Dana yeah. White said he gets that win. He, he He's moving to lightweight and gets an immediate shot at the title. What do you think about that? And then what do you think about the potential of you guys having to, to face each other? Because you're one one or two wins away from a shot at the title. Man, it's so it's so hard to keep up with all this stuff. I mean, this is all news to me. And, and uh, all I can do is prepare for my next bout and, and just because it might change eight times before it happens. You know, that's just kind of how it is. So um, it's an unpredictable sport, and um, you got to take it day by day. Yeah, just ask you know, Johnny and, Hendricks. And, and if you plan ahead, you're gonna you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be up the creek without a paddle. Yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> nice little censorship there. I like it. Yes, yes. You uh, made you made our you made our Mondo creek. happy. Yes. But speaking about your next fight, TJ Grant, I mean, the dude's been on an absolute tear since he dropped down to lightweight. Uh, what are your thoughts on the on the fight? I think he's a top guy. Not the top guy, but he's like a top guy. Um, I asked for the Pettis bout, and uh, they gave me one harder. So I was jumping up for joy. Is, is, is Pettis an easy fight? You know, Styles. It's a good. It's a good one for me. It's a great name. Um, you know, he likes to have that space, uh, and you know, I don't do that. So, you know, I asked for him, and and that didn't happen. So he dropped down, and uh, I got T.J. Grant, who's on a tear, and um, you know, it's it's. The type that I get, uh, that I get kind of hyped up about. Hey, Gray, got a question? I'm Another question for you. This is um, actually for Joey and Gray. Out of curiosity, how much is it more difficult to go up in weight and maintain that? Because it almost seems like if, when a guy's going down in weight, he has to work harder. Obviously, in his camp, he has to diet. He has to do all the stuff that he has to do to keep and maintain that weight. When you go up in um, and at a weight class and you don't have to maybe work as hard um, or you can kind of get lazy. Is it, is, it a lot, is it more difficult for fighters to go up in weight and maintain that, um, you know, their, their status and, and their, their, their ruling of a weight class, if that makes sense? Um, going up is always harder just because, uh, um, you know, the guys are more big. Bigger, I guess. <laughs> More big. <laughs> More big. <laughs> Bigger. Um, I mean, I don't know. You train hard still, but, but uh, you know, I guess it's always easier to go down, you know, easier as in like, well, well, if I, if I go down, then, then it'll be easier because they're smaller, but it's harder as in dieting and 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 the eating part and train more so you know it's a trade-off i guess speak speaking of going down uh there was a rumor floating around based off and i saw the tw- oh <laughs> oh yeah, man yeah, leave it to tom going, keep going, keep i said i said speaking i tom just hey, took hey, me back to sixth grade going. i say speaking of going down it's tom would, starts uh, chuckling I would, I would never do such a thing how dare you <laughs> Um, but no, there was a, there was a, I saw you know they made a headline off it. I know you don't go on and read all the the, the forums or the the sites, but yeah. but, I, but I'm a nerd. I do. And uh, some someone asked you on Twitter about moving down to 145, and you you kind of yeah. said we'll see, or something along those lines. And they, they they really blew it up to seem like that was a potential. Has that thought even ever crossed your mind? I think I was like three IPAs deep. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's Indian pale ale for everyone that that, that, that doesn't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. No, um, I was just kind of joking around. Um, you know, if there was a, a bout that was like really awesome, like, you know, the Edgar 
um, about that'd be great. That would that would give me that would like I would try to do it. Of course, I don't know if I could, but um, you know, maybe the TV show, show, show like, and then and then and then have it. Then I'd have more time to do it, but um, like I don't know. So, like talking about that. tough, you and Frankie doing tough. No, they're not talking about that. No, were you? Were you? Were you? Were you, were you, were you talking about that? The Edgar bout is, is kind of off as of now. You know, that's not going to happen as of now. Dana, you know, he kind of uh, wants him to not get hurt, I think. <laughs> so he's keeping the bully from fighting him. See, now, Greg, you're bringing up an interesting point. Um, you know, you and Frankie, you went in there and you guys had uh, an exciting fight. Actually, uh, multiple exciting fights. You went in there and you fought so many, so many times and... Every second of the fight was was fun, entertaining, amazing. And then this past weekend, you know, you have a lot of critics talking about the Dan Henderson and the Machida fight, how it was more technical and it was, you know, there wasn't any excitement. Now, in your last fight, you had to deal with that with um, Clay. And, and, you know, Clay was a guy who was used to having that that aura of always being in an exciting fight. Is it hard to, like, when you're preparing for a guy and he all of a sudden changes his style up right away and it's more about winning for him instead of about entertaining? Yeah. Um, I, mean, I, I mean, I think we're all trying to, 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 do, to do both. I think Clay was just trying not to get hurt, you know, to be honest. Um, I hit him pretty hard in round two. And, uh, and like, you know, after that, he, he, he was just, you know, it was like that panic, get me out of here mode. And, uh, I mean, I don't know. It, it, it was a weird fight. I, I, I couldn't believe that, like at the time, I, I just, you know, I couldn't believe that that was going on. <clears throat> Yeah, it. it um, sh- there was a lot of people in the arena and a lot of people watching that were, were just as, uh, you know, confused. And I guess for some guys, there that becomes there's this point where it's no longer about uh, you know going out there and putting on a show. I can't hurt myself. I have to worry about my next fight and my career. And that's when it's like you know I'm no longer a fighter. I'm an athlete, and it's I'm gonna sit there and I have to protect myself. And, yeah. and that doesn't, you know, sometimes that doesn't transcend in a sport that, while, yes, it's violent, it has its, you know, its exciting moments, the point of a fighter is to go out there and win. Right. So it's just when is when does it happen for, has that happened for you, or do you, that's not ever going to happen for you? Could you repeat that, uh, that question? <laughs> like, <laughs> do, do you think it'll ever for be a, for you about just winning and not about going out there and putting on a show? It is about. I mean, you gotta win. I mean, this is a lot. People gotta understand that. Like, we're going through camps. We're going through. I mean, it's half of our paycheck to not win. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you gotta put together a plan. There's times it's going to, like, look to be awesome, and then there's times it'll be slow. Then there's times it'll be, you know, okay. I mean, but you've got to win. That's the, that's the whole key to sports is win. And, and um, you know, obviously a person that it's slow over and over and over again, that just that kind of hurts him for the sport. But, um, you know, I mean, if you're going out there to do that, it's going to be a fun fight because you're trying to, you're trying to beat him, you know? Um, I mean, then you get to the point where it's like, all right, well, he's trying to score a point here, score a point there. He's trying not to lose. He's not trying to like beat the guy. He's trying not to lose. 
there's a big difference. Understood completely. Do Do you think yeah. though? Do you think that with the pay structure as is, the show purse, win purse, do you think that can encourage people to go out there and, and fight to not lose, as opposed to if you had it? Hey, guess what? You're making X, no matter whether you win or lose. People would fight a little more aggressive, a little more entertaining. I mean, I couldn't tell you all that. You know, I have no <laughs> idea. But for me, it's 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 just, um, you know, like I hate to lose, and and if it was a like a team sport, it'd be a little bit easier. But that's another man trying to beat me. So you know, like I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to kill him. Not kill him. But <laughs> well, it, speak it, about it, beat him up. <clears throat> well, Gray, speak about trying to kill somebody. You got that fight coming up with TJ Grant, at UFC 160, and it's gonna be fun, right it's here. Gonna be in Vegas. fun. Yeah. <laughs> Any quick yeah, thoughts? Any fight. quick closing thoughts on the fight? Or no, he's just a tough kid. You know, um, uh, I just got the tapes a couple days ago, so we're gonna get going on that. And, uh, you know, just, you know, it, you know, it's, I don't know, it's a good fight. It Talk is, about it. it is going to be a great fight. Well, Looking we wish you, wish you all the best with your fight coming up with TJ Grant in May, May 25th, people. Check it out. We look forward to it. And, uh, when you're in Vegas, if you want to join us here in studio, Gray, you're more than welcome. We'd love to see you yeah, and Joey Vonna. We'd love to see you and Joey Vonna go out of face to face on air. He's no, beat me he's enough. Too tough for me, man. He's yeah. too slick. <laughs> but he's like Pettis, though. I think. I think if I hit him, you know, he might. He might. Be- <laughs> <laughs> uh, th- thanks. Uh, all right, Greg. Great. Thanks so much. Uh, we'll he can s- take a punch. <laughs> <laughs> no, he can definitely take a punch. <laughs> you hit me enough. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. All hey, right, thanks, Greg. brother. Appreciate it. Talk to all you right, soon. We'll talk to you soon. Well. That's so he, a lot to say. He, he's got a good, he's got a good fun fight in front of him. T.J. Grant, you saw what he did to Matt Wyman in his last fight. Looked like an absolute monster, and is you know he's been on a tear since he's dropped down to what from welterweight to 155. Yeah, from welterweight to lightweight. So I'm 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 really interested in this fight, and it could. It could give you one of your next contenders. Well, you look at the, the the ranking system right now. Gray's number three under Gilbert Melendez, who's fighting for the belt. Anthony Pettis, who's dropping weight to fight Jose Aldo. So really, Gray with the win is is based on the ranking is the next in line for a title shot. At, at least that's how I did my <laughs> MMA math. <laughs> <laughs> math. Uh, real quick, we have Tom Atencio in the studio who's been joining us and. In- chiming in every once in a while tell us a little bit about what your new company and what's going on here grips athletics so we're starting out with um kimonos we're doing a lightweight kimono it's um has a the dupont um antimicrobial and anti-odor inside of it in certain spots it's 100 percent cotton pre-shrunk uh pearl weave it's got the lightweight pants the lightweight top um it's grips athletics is the name of the company and I'll be running the North American division of the company, and uh, I'll be the director of marketing for worldwide. And uh, new company, new gig. I really believe in the products. I, I, Joey's seen it. The uh, the stuff's really well manufactured. So I, I wouldn't have gotten involved with them if I if I wasn't um, if I didn't believe in the product. For everybody to look at the pro- the product, go to gripsathletic.com to see exactly what Tom is talking about. This is a great night. We have not only Tom Atencio in studio ex-affliction guy and face of affliction, but also Todd Rex joins us as well. T-Rex? T-Rex joins <laughs> us as well. Trauma gear as well. So it's a it's a clothing night. <laughs> well, well, Tom, uh, in regards- but nobody came with any clothing. I don't understand. In, in regards to grips, like what separates grips from your other kimonos, your other training gear? What is, what is it that makes them stand out? You know, really it's just the quality of it at the end of the day. Um, I got involved with this company because there are three Italian, um, my partners are three Italian guys. Two of them are, live in Italy. The third one lives in Hong Kong. So as far as the manufacturing goes, it's top quality, top notch stuff. It's, uh, we, we do a lot of research and that's kind of what I liked most about it is the R&D that's going to go in, um, into it and getting, getting the top guys out there to, to try 
try the stuff on before we even release it. And, you know, if you look at, it's kind of my biggest thing is uh, it, the differences in the details and the details are really what make a quality product. And, and from the, the beginning, when I found this company, uh, the, 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 the product was so well manufactured, I was on board and then I went over to Hong Kong and made some adjustments to it. And, and I'm real happy with it. And I think really that's really what it comes down to is quality product that can be used by pros. He sold me on the anti-odor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that got me right, right, right away. I was he like, sold me to get that for you. Yes. <laughs> well, that's why Joey told me to come in. Yeah. yeah. You make yeah. Un- you make underwear too. <laughs> <laughs> those are next. Yeah. Yeah, those are next. Yeah. I was gonna say. No, but you talked about your 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 R and D team, the research and development. You know, reaching out to these top guys and getting them to try try it first. Who are some of the top guys? What are some of the athletes? What does an athlete need to have and bring to the table for f- to, to represent the Grips brand? You know, just like before with Affliction, you know, I mean, I'm just looking at top level guys and um, people that have potential, good work ethic, guys that, um, you know, go out there and and perform. At the end of the day, it's MMA, so there's so many ways that you can lose. But, you know, in the in the jujitsu world, we're looking at top level um, jujitsu athletes, too. So, you know, I mean, that's a little bit different than the MMA industry. But in the jujitsu, you know, top competitors and guys that have promise. And what's the what's the what's the big what's the overall vision the grand world ultimate domination takeover plan? I mean, you're starting in kimonos. Are you going to go all the way over to you know rash guards, combat sports, maybe and break into shin guards, gloves, uh, uh, lifestyle clothing, like like well, like tap out or affliction? Well, at the end of the day, it's world dominance. Joe was asking an yeah. obvious question. Yeah. Hello? World dominance. That's no. it, period. Everybody wearing it. If you want to be a winner, we <laughs> we just we, we're telling you, go get gripsathletic.com. Gripsathletic.com, wear this stuff and you'll be a winner. It's that simple. Very simple. Now, really what it is, it's, it's an athletic wear. We're going to be, we're, we're making shorts. We'll have board shorts. We'll have workout shorts that you can use for the gym, jogging. We have the track suits, the jackets. Um, but the kimonos is kind of the, the start of the company because we put so much into those, and, and that's kind of the, the beginning of the company. But we're looking at athletics, so that's, that's and ultimately what we're going for. I like it. Very I like cool. Athletics. I like it as well. So you, so you would say that you guys are athletic supporters? Uh, yes. Uh, Actually, man, yeah. Joey Vaughn is attempting comedy again. Yeah, Joe, Joe, Joe Stradamus. Yeah, Joe Stradamus. Joe, Joe, you love that one. You love that one. You get a Joey. Joey. You ever yeah. see a guy name himself so much? Joey Vegas, yeah, Joe, Joe Stradamus. I, I didn't name my. You know who named me Joey Vegas? No, no you did. No. Yeah, uh, you did. Tom, Tom, Tom did. Tom Tom Tom. Tom. Yeah, sure. Sean. I'm, Sean did. I'm turning white next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and, 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 you, and you really used to need glasses. I still do. <laughs> Jinx yourself with that one. Well, Tom, we want to thank you so much for joining us. And also, next time, send us some gear. I want to check it I, out. I'll have product here middle to the end of this month, um, U.S., to start shipping out. And I will definitely get I will wear stuff. it proudly. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'd love to see Billy wearing a kimono. <laughs> in here. I'd like to yeah. Yeah. Here. I'd like to get him on the mat while he's wearing one. Oh, you would let, Joe would love to choke me out on the mat, especially Ugh. in some grips. <laughs> Joey can choke me out in some grips athletic. Uh, well, It'll be a little more. So you and you won't and eyes. you won't smell when you urinate yourself. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And also right now as you can Ready join for us. MMA news. It's time for Heidi's hit list. Oh! If you want something done, you gotta do it yourself, girl. Here's the microphone. You all know I ain't waiting for no man to handle business for me. Did you guys hear that new sweep? Uh-huh. Heidi just made her own sweep. I love it. Because she waited a month or six months. Three. <laughs> three. Yeah. three. <laughs> Billy's like, it's only three. <laughs> Well, check it out, guys. I got some news here for you. First of all, we were talking about Jose Aldo and the Anthony Pettis title fight. It looks like the targeted date is August 3rd at a venue to be announced. Also, UFC on FX8, that's in Brazil in Santa Catarina, on May 18th. Right now, they added Evan Dunham versus Rafael Dos Anjos. I like that one a lot. Absolutely. Also, uh, at the presser, at the press conference following UFC 157, MMA Fight Corner's Heidi Fang asked Dana White who would be next to challenge Rousey. Looks like the winner, Tate and Kat Zingano, will be likely to get the next title shot. Where'd you get that question? Oh, no, some bird was talking to me and said, maybe you should say that. (laughs) His name was Joey Varner. Um, he patted himself on the back again. Did you see that, Atencio? Hey, I'm not saying anything. I've uh, known Joey too long. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Heidi. Also, four other women have been announced as signed to the UFC. It's also been officially confirmed by the UFC. Jermaine de Ramadine, uh, Sarah Kaufman, Julie... Nick Ring. 
Oh. <laughs> Josefina. Varner. Julie Cadzi. <laughs> and Brazilian hard hitter Amanda Nunes. Also at the press conference, we were discussing this earlier, but Dana White said if Gina Carano does want to come back, she, the door is open for her, but he will not pursue her because of the movie career, so it's up to Gina. Uh, also, Dominic Cruz today was reported on Sharedog as being far from being cleared by doctors to return. They were targeting uh, summer of this year, but as of right now, he's only cleared to run and not have any contact, no sparring, not, nothing else. So it looks like maybe a while for Dominic. Wow. Yeah. So at what? No, at no what, dating. At, <laughs> yeah. At what point do they officially do they strip him of the title? No way. That's why the interim belt is there. Heenan gets to defend that. The interim belt is the. Act as if it's 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 like it's the substitute teacher. If the substitute if the teacher goes away sick, you know, for a long time, the substitute teacher will stay the teacher there for that year, that two years, for three years. That's what this it's the substitute belt. There, but there is a time, there is a time standard. How long did it take with Frank Mir, where they realized he wasn't going to come back, and they just they gave a new heavyweight title? Well, we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. I don't know. <laughs> you Stone don't know. Me. You don't know. People tune in this Tuesday. I'm sorry, this Friday, God, at 5 o'clock, where we can further this conversation. Also get into the UFC on Fuel 8 card happening in Japan. Sick card. Oh, we'll talk all about that. We want to thank our guests for joining us, Tom Tensio. Thanks so much, man, for coming in. Next time I want some gear. <laughs> I want deal. some gear. Gray, Gray, if you're listening out there, thanks, man, for, for chiming in and duking it out here with Joey Vonner. We want to thank you, the fight fans, and forever all your exclusive news, interviews, everything. Go to MMAFightCorner.com. You listen to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920.